Hey everybody, I'm the Bigglesworth, and welcome back to the commentary track for AlphaCraft. So this was a intro that I worked on. I had seen a bunch of different videos going around of people kind of recreating an 80s vibe for stuff, and I thought that would be a lot of fun to do. Um, so that kind of inspired me with the, uh, you can see here, the links to my Patreon, Twitter, and Discord channel. It kind of looks like an old VCR tape playing, and the intro does that as well. Um, what's really funny is if you'll go back and watch the very, very first image where you see the television set, and you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the television set, there is a uh, a piece of the table you can see. <laughs> what I had done was built this giant set uh, in a creative world of the television set, and then I put green blocks where the screen was. And so that way I could take a still image of that. I could use my uh, video editing software to key out the green, and then I could put a pre-rendered video in there that looks like you're watching a television set with the blue screen like before you would hit play on a VCR tape versus after. Um, but there's this one little fragment of the table I forgot to get rid of and I didn't notice it until I had rendered out all the video and gotten the intro music and everything edited and ready to go. And so I just figured, you know what, I'm just going to leave it there. And uh, maybe a year later, I mentioned it in my Discord channel. Hey, you want to see something you can't unsee? <laughs> Look at the bottom left-hand corner of that screen. I'll kind of uh, fade in and out some images just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the different um, uh, steps and stuff for making the intro. I might even do a special video just for the intro, all the different things that had to be done, because that was that was quite a task to create that. Editing the music, editing the video, coming up with this this style, and kind of pushing myself to try things a little bit different with the titles and whatnot. But here we are in episode one, and uh, like I said in the previous uh, episode commentary, you really are doing the same things over and over again in Minecraft whenever you start a new world. It's, it, you're pretty much doing the same stuff, almost in the same order, maybe a slightly different order. Um, but what I wanted to do here was, and this is actually a mine shaft that is down at the uh, the base underneath the mountains. Um, I, I think what had happened was uh, I had... Yeah, that's what it was. I'd logged on and I'd looked around and I'd found a mountain that I thought would be pretty cool to build in. And silly me, I didn't write down the coordinates to it. So what happened later was um, Spiderweb Ninja was on and I asked her, could she help me find a really cool mountain to build? Not to build the mountain, but to build around. So she led me over to some coordinates that looked really good. So we went ahead and picked that and um, I wrote those coordinates down, started building there. And later on found out that it was real close to JJ and Wild City. And so that's why later on we kind of have, we don't really end up with a border dispute per se. It's just we had to work out the details about where's the borderline going to be. Um, how much room did they need to go ahead and build their city? Because come to find out later on, I kind of felt bad about it. They have more of the city they wanted to build in this area. But um, my base kind of impeded them from expanding in that direction, so they had to rework it. Um, so it, it kind of stank that, that that played out the way it did. And I know Spiderweb felt bad because she had kind of helped me find the coordinates and verified, yeah, this is a good area. And it was just it was just one of those things. It, it just everybody was well-intentioned, had no idea that it was going to play out the way it did, and it just did. And, you know, we made it work. And that's, that's one of the good things about being on a server with uh, – other content creators that are working hard to try and uh, make good content and stuff. You all try to work together as a team to make things work. And sometimes things get messed up and it's great to be around a group of people that are uh, more mature minded instead of, you know, um, I've been on one or two uh, servers in the past. They weren't, they were just more public servers, um, not content creator servers. And just the public servers, you get a lot of drama, people wanting to start fights and whatnot. And there's something about being around a group of content creators where they all just they don't want to work together. You want to try and see each other succeed. 
So um, the fact that this server was somewhat established already kind of helped me in the fact that I could go ahead and work on designing a house for town. Um, there was already some farms to get XP, so I kind of had come up with this idea where I wanted to uh, I wanted to build a dirt house. Everybody builds a dirt house for their first house in Minecraft. I wanted to build this over-the-top, luxurious house made out of dirt that a pig would love. Pigs love dirt. <laughs> so I was looking at the blocks uh, that were available in the game at the time. A bunch of different versions of brown blocks. And one of the ones I stumbled upon was the brown mushroom blocks. I'm like, oh yeah, I could use that for a few of the things. I'm like, well, wait a minute, what does it take to get brown mushroom blocks? And I noticed that um, you have to have I, I, I mean, we're going to find out here in a few minutes on camera what happens, but I think it, it had to be a silk touch axe you had to use to be able to chop the mushroom and get the mushroom blocks. So I was like, oh, that'd make for an interesting uh, episode, and I can put an interesting little caption in the thumbnail that says, you enchanted what? And just kind of make it where I'm dragging you along as the audience to watch me go through all these steps where I end up enchanting. Oh, yeah, there it is, the enchanted axe. Let's see if I, yeah, I'm, I'm being a little troll jerk. There we go, silk touch. <laughs> I'm being a little troll jerk, like slowly hovering the mouse over but not doing it. But, yeah, I was kind of like, you know, maybe I can get people watching it to be like, why in the world did you put silk touch on an axe? What are you up to? You know, I, now... I've since learned that there's a really cool trick where with an axe, if you put silk touch on it, you get leaf blocks from trees a whole lot. Um, instead of having to carry around shears as you're chopping at trees, if you accidentally chop one of the leaf blocks, you just kind of get a leaf block as a, a side side note. So it's not unheard of that you would use silk touch, but to waste silk touch on an iron axe when I haven't gotten diamond yet, you know, what are you up to piggy? What are you doing? So it was whole, this whole idea of working up to uh, gathering mushroom blocks so I could build the house. Now the house, um, I some of my more um, complex builds, I will actually create them and work out all the details in a creative world. Because the thing is, when you're creating content, especially on AlphaCraft, uh, one of the rules was... Um, and, and they work with you on these rules because they understand real life gets in the way. But it it's kind of um, you're pushed towards you should put out at least one episode a week. If you're not putting out an episode a week, then there has to be a reason for it. And, and like I said, they're very lax. I mean, like if you're having stuff going on in real life that just keeps you from being able to do it, they're everybody's fine with it. They work with each other. Like I said, it's people are professional minded on this server. So it's really great. Um, but, <laughs> and I've completely lost my train of thought while I was talking about, but Oh, Oh, okay. Um, so being able to put out, uh, content recorded, edit it, all the different things you have to do, gathering the materials, um, sometimes trying to build something in survival, and work out the details can take hours. And if you build it wrong, you got to tear it apart and do it again. And so it helps on more complex designs to work them out in a creative world to figure out what you want to accomplish. And then you kind of know what materials you're going to need to gather, where you need to put your focus. Um, it helps you with dimensions, especially when you start building things that have to fit in a certain area. Um, like for here in town, the challenge was it had to be a one chunk build. It couldn't be any bigger. Um, you could have some gardens and stuff that went around your structure that were slightly bigger, but you mainly had to stay within one chunk. That was the challenge. So it was nice to be able to just go into a creative world and create this structure, work out some of the redstone uh, contraptions that I wanted to be inside of it, and just really help me come up with a, a grocery list, per se, of all the materials I was going to need to build this. Now, the trick was recreating it in survival. That's always the trick, because when you're in creative, you just go, go, go. Uh, your, your creative juices get flowing. You just, you're limited only by time because you have access to all the blocks. So I just created this great build that I loved. Um, 
I know, great build because I'm biased because <laughs> I'm the one who built it. But I mean, I built this thing that I really, really liked and wanted to see in survival. And so what I ended up having to do was use, um, I can't remember what they called them. They added them to, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to mention this. I had this idea where I'm going to put commercials in the episode somewhere around the middle mark. I thought it would be fun that instead of having a commercial just pop up in the video, stick with the 80s theme and make it like, you know, you would go to commercial and then you would get this little blurb that was saying, now back to the show, and then you would go back to it. That's kind of how older cartoons were at the time. So I thought that would be a fun little thing. So if you ever notice watching Alpha Craft on YouTube, if you ever get a, a commercial in the middle of the episode, it's synchronized to show up right before that we come back to, you know, the thing. I actually had one viewer ask me about that because they thought that's what I was doing. They're like, oh, that's such a cool little subtlety. I, I like that. But um, there's these uh, these blocks in creative. They're they're almost like structure blocks. I can't remember exactly what they're called. Um, but you can use these these blocks to cut and paste a certain area in the game. You can actually go in and, and edit and choose the XYZ coordinates. So what I did was I put a bunch of these blocks together. I sliced up the, the house into layers. And then I recreated each layer one at a time. I was going to do a time lapse of me building it, actually film the time lapse. Um, took several hours to do. And then when it came time to start rendering out, it just, it looked terrible because the way I was building it, I was building it in layers and it just, it, it wasn't working. The way that the, the replay uh, time lapse was going, it wasn't working. I'm like, well, great. I've already built this thing and the replay is already recorded. It didn't work. What do I do? So I'm kind of panicking on episode one. How are we going to do this? Now, what happens is if you learn to control the panic, the fear that sets in, and this happens a lot with people, uh, creative people, you're writing a song, you're recording music, you're filming something, you're drawing a cartoon. I mean, ask any person that is creative minded, that's doing a creative project and they're going to run into problems. It happens. And so what you do is you have to learn how to not let fear of the problem overtake you. Instead, you look at it as an opportunity to do something. So what happens is step one, you have to let go of the vision that you had before because it's not working for whatever reason. Something's not gelling. It's not coming together. So you have to set that aside. And then you have to look at, you assess, you look at all of the material that you've gathered that you can work with. And so you have to say, okay, what, am, what, what can I do with this? What creative thing could I do with this? So I came up with this idea for this episode where I'm just going to do this really cool, quick trick. Whoop. See that? <laughs> so I just, I spun around in front of the structure with nothing there. Then I spun around again with the structure there. And I just did a cool, quick little edit. I found two frames when I was spinning around that looked very similar to each other so that it didn't look like my visual looking up and down changed too much. And I just quick edited those two together. And so I made it look like when I spun around, poof, the house is just there. Just kind of like a little magic trick. I actually had uh, one viewer say that one of their kids was watching the episode and they were trying to figure out how I did that trick. And he said that his his uh, his kid was saying, "I bet when Piggy spun around, he had everybody on Alpha Craft build the house really quick," <laughs> which I thought was a, a creative uh, method for for a child to come up with how that would work. But it was actually just video editing. I I told the I told the dad I said, "Well, sorry to break his heart, but no, I actually built it. And it took several hours, and it's just an editing trick. So that's why I, what I had done here." And like I said, I just wanted this to be mostly a luxurious dirt hut. Um, so tried to, of course, we've got wood and other stuff in here as well, but just tried to make it where there was a lot of just brown colors, brown palette being used um, for all the different 
Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> sometimes talking a lot like that makes you want to yawn. I actually do that in my videos sometimes. I used to edit it out, and it just got to the point where it was too much editing, so I'd just being lazy, left it in. But yeah, just, you know, tried to different vegetation stuff um, and different things like that. And like I said, I wanted a, a few little um, redstone things in here as well. Now, one trick... Uh, or not trick, but one challenge that I'm always giving myself is how can I make builds that are spawn proof? If you're playing in survival, there's nothing worse than a creeper showing up and blowing up what you're building or a, uh, an enderman showing up and moving blocks around. So see, I came up with, we've got a little lever I can flip and it will open and close both of the windows in the front of the house. I thought that would be a cool little simple redstone mechanism to have. Um, so it's basically just a circuit that powers the two blocks underneath the, uh, the trap doors and flips them open and close. We got a little balcony up here. We can kind of look out and see if people are walking around, coming over to visit or not. And then a whole structure underneath the house. Um, but yeah, just trying to come up with creative ways of using path blocks and leaf blocks um, and, and farmland, different things like that to make sure there's nowhere that a bad guy could spawn in here. Now, I think at one time, uh, I think it was Stina Rose had actually come down here to this lower level. And for whatever reason, there was something down here I didn't have lit properly. And she came down here to make a delivery and um, actually had a creeper blow up on her her down here so she had she went ahead and fixed what blew up i felt so bad because i told everybody my house is safe don't worry about it and then she went down there trusting me and a creeper sneaks up on her and blows up so um later on like when i first joined the server it was known there's pretty much you can't use any mods um some people were using like uh, journey map, stuff like that. Uh, but one mod that they approved for me to use was a light mod. What it does is it, it basically draws colored X's. Um, I think green means okay. Yellow means could potentially spawn. Red means will definitely spawn. It basically shows you the light level over each block surface to let you know if stuff needs to be lit up or not, if it's going to be dangerous. So, yeah, here I am just naming that barrel mailbox so we can put it out front and have anybody ever clicks on it and they're not quite sure what it is, it'll say mailbox and it kind of cue them in. But I thought it'd be cool if like we had a little kitchen and a little dining area, underground uh, carrots growing, a um, little cow head, which has since turned into a Steve head because we had to update the server and lost all of the player heads. <laughs> And this is another cool little thing. I was like, you know, it'd be cool. Let's make it where we can uh, we can turn off and on these uh, trap doors, and it will reveal that there is a a sauna or a mud pit <laughs> per se, <laughs> kind of like a little. Uh, I guess the bathroom and the bedroom are combined. I never really thought that one through. Um, I think it was kind of strapped for space because of the one chunk build thing. Um, but just thought it would be cool go ahead and <clears throat> oh excuse me go ahead and put like a little mud pit sauna thing down there but but yeah, it was a lot of fun to gather up all of these blocks for episode one that normally you don't gather you usually don't have to gather mushroom blocks and brown clay blocks um all these different kind of dirts soul sand i think this is also where i found out see we had a death counter on the server every time you die it would keep track of it and i had to go into the nether to get soul sand and i forgot that soul sand is like one pixel shorter than regular blocks and so i was standing on soul sand and i, I think what i'd done was squatted so that i wouldn't fall off the edge well when i squatted it actually let my character touch the lava and so i ended up catching on fire and dying so that was my first death was forgetting that soul sand will will let you die to lava <laughs> so way to go piggy way to go but yeah this this uh this first little build um i think i had filmed this maybe about 2 weeks before it released what i had, what i tried to do 
was, and I managed to keep it going for quite some time. I tried to do it where I think I had the first three episodes filmed and the first two episodes were edited and uploaded before I let the whole public know that I was on Alpha Craft and that there were episodes coming out. And so basically what that did is it gave me just a little bit of time, a couple of weeks in advance to kind of pre-record, pre-plan builds, stuff like that. And sometimes whenever I, uh, whatever I was working on, say, you know, like I said, you're two to three weeks ahead. If for whatever reason I started getting caught up or not caught up, but lagging behind in my mind, But if the episode release started catching up to I'm working this week on the one I got to release, then I would look to do uh, collaborative stuff with other people because those you can film pretty quick. Um, They don't always take a whole lot of pre-planning. Some of them do. I mean, it just depends. But usually you can come up with a cool collaboration idea and work with somebody. So it's like two people working on the amount of work for one episode. So it speeds it up a little bit. And you can supplement those um, as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I added in the Patreon. Thank you. Those are the first four uh, Patreons on there. Magpie, who I've known a long time, actually. I'll get to talking to, about him later. He's a pretty cool guy. As as are all of the people in my Discord and everything. Just a great bunch of people. Great fans to have. But, yeah, this was uh, this was official episode one. You enchanted what? I enchanted an axe so we could get silk touch and we could um, chop up mushrooms so we could build our luxury dirt apartment. <laughs> so, I really enjoyed doing this episode. Really enjoyed doing the commentary and glad that everybody seems to be enjoying it. Been getting a lot of great feedback on the, the different commentary. But thank you all so much for watching. Had a whole lot of fun doing this, and I can't wait to do more of them in the future.